Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I hope it's going to be even better because we're going to be making the bayonet, the M9 bayonet from CSGO. We forged it out yesterday in part one and today the first thing that I'm going to be thinking of is how I'm going to machine on this. I don't have a surface grinder so I need to be using my mill. Bridgeport mill that's over there. On a surface grinder you have a magnetic base. Here I have a vise so I need to find a way of mounting this so that I can face off the top and what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole the very bottom of the tank since it's way longer than I need it and I'm then going to TIG weld on some mounting points here that I can then have threaded holes to then thread from the underside through a plate that's gripped in a vise and as you guys recently saw I TIG welded for the first time just the other day so this is exciting it means I get to practice a little more this time with filler rod and this time on something that if it breaks free could then spin around and hit me and, and kill Kill me. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Well, in true style of what it is that we do here when we don't know how to do it, we just get cracking on and give it a go at least, and we'll see, we'll see how it fares. Okay, first thing on the agenda, I'm gonna get a little bit of a rough profile in here, so I have something to work off of when I do the other little bits of machining that need to get done to this. I'm gonna leave it, leave it proud at the tip and proud at the tang, though, so that once I weld in those areas, I can grind it out without having to uh, worry about destroying the profile. So let's get to it. One little quick thing, I just changed the filters on my respirator and uh, so here's one of the old ones. I want to look inside. Let's see how it looks. Oh, that is crazy. Now that, my friends, could all have been in my lungs. That is why it's so important to wear that respirator. It takes 10 seconds to put on. Put on the respirator. Don't be silly, because I've been silly enough. Okay, let's go to work. that one pass over here and I took a little bit more of a heavy cut than uh, than I really should have took but it's fine you know it actually worked pretty well but you can see just how much it was vibrating because of these undulations in the uh, in the finish of the piece I think that's because this whole thing is vibrating uh, partly because of the heavy cut and also partly because of the fact that obviously we're milling on the ends here like it's difficult to get it all to be solid um, it, it works though which is good I'm gonna be able to do the same thing on the other side with that any problems. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my favorite color of, uh, of Dicom, which is blue Dicom, the only color Dicom that you should ever be buying, because just look at how beautiful that is. Like it's, it just turns any piece of steel, like it's just, oh my goodness, look at that. Wow. So while my beloved blue dicum dries, I'm quickly going to nip onto the computer. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the bayonet itself, some more images of it as we plan out and work out the proportions of where some of the machining needs to be done in it. Okay, so I've got this thing scaled up to be about the same size as the actual bayonet that I have sat in the mill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some paper up on here and then I'm going to trace around it. Then I can go back over in that direction to the mill, measure it up, um, and then do an according thing on the actual piece. 
So of course, that tracing that I did, it's relatively arbitrary. The point isn't to stick this on the piece of steel and then mill through it, of course. The point is to get a rough idea of where things are gonna go, take my calipers, mark on here the measurements that I need, take those measurements, and then apply them to the steel from the calipers. So this way I can, you know, hopefully get it as accurate as possible, and then when I flip it over, and I do some of the things I need to do on the other side, I'll then be able to have, you know, appropriate accuracy when I do it from there. Okay, so now I know that from the zero on my mill, I need to go 55 millimeters to 75 millimeters, and I need to go two millimeters up, which I'll have to then measure here after I touch this off on the surface. One of my big concerns here is that the Damascus steel might not be soft enough, and so that high-speed steel uh, milling cut, a ball end mill, might not cut it. If that happens, then we gotta go to a carbide end mill, but I don't have any ball end carbide. Carb carbide carbide end mills, which would be sad because then we wouldn't get a nice kind of scalloped fuller line and we'd have to end up with kind of straight sides. Hopefully this works and hopefully I don't snap it or, or break it obviously because that would then make it not work. It's going well. This is awesome. Could have been a lot worse. Okay, so we're gonna be using this little carbide end mill. This is a 10 millimeter end mill. What that is gonna do is that is gonna go right in there on that scribe line, and we're gonna make a 15 millimeter long groove with this. So that hole is gonna be 15 millimeters long, 10 millimeters wide. Which means that by the time we grind down the rest of this blade, it should indeed match the width of this particular puller. It has been a while since I've talked to you, and since then, obviously, I machined up the other side, we put the fuller groove in, boom, and then I need to make the saw things. The, the saw things. Um, and so my plan was is to tilt this over, tilt over the head of the bridge port, and then just kind of mount this in there, and then kind of run it back and forth, and then I get the angle kind of saw marks in there, and I'd be able to really, really easily keep it all neat and consistent. Sadly, however, I think something's broken in here. This is a really old machine, of course, and I think somebody at one point must have wrenched on that too hard without loosening the bolts, because it, it, won't, it won't turn, so I can't pivot that head over. I can't even kind of, you know, pull it over with brute force. Oh well! Instead, what we're doing is I got this clamped up on that piece of steel again, we've got the vise swiveled across, and then I'm gonna just be able to go across here on the Y axis, following these scribe lines to the depth of this scribe line here. And I think this should still go pretty well as a decent way of getting these saw marks in there. So here we are, we have the saw cut in, we have the fuller, we have that hole there. You know, funnily enough, I actually didn't know that this was a real knife. I thought it was just from uh, from the video, go, the video game CSGO. Turns out the M9 knife is actually the military issue bayonet in the US Army, and I'm so sorry that I did not know that, because I could have probably just gone off the exact measurements of the actual thing, instead I made them up. Which is fine, you know, it still looks cool, it's just two inches longer than it would have otherwise been. On the military version, that hole there, you put that onto a little pin on the sheath, and you can then cut wire with it. Pretty interesting, things I did not know. Anyway, I'm now going to run into the grinding room, and I'm gonna get these bevels broken into there, get the profile down, make sure that we grind past any of the welds, break the tang down a little bit, and uh, this should go pretty well.
fucking unbelievable. Oh my goodness, I have never made grinds so good. I mean, it's a rough grind, obviously, you know, it's the 60 grit, we're roughing it in, but I've never done anything so good. I use that little adjustable tool rest, oh my goodness, to get these perfect little hollow grounds, hollow grinds roughed in there. That went amazingly. I cannot believe how brilliantly this is looking. The forge is now hot. I am just so confident that this is gonna be a really great piece when it's done. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. So. This needs to go into the fire. We're gonna heat it up to a red temperature. We're gonna let it air cool. Before we do that, I'm gonna stamp my touch mark on both sides. I've forgotten to do it on the past couple things. We're gonna stamp the touch mark in there now. Then we're gonna normalize it two or three times. Then it's on into the oil for the quench. And yes, this will fit in there, unlike the Damascus Viking Battle Axe. two days this has been. I hope you guys are sharing these videos with your friends. I'd love to get as many more people interested in this as possible. Make sure that you're hitting like, make sure that you're commenting below, and make sure if you are new that you're watching the other videos and you're hitting subscribe. Part one of this is gonna be linked right there. All sorts of other great videos on the channel. One other little thing though, guys, don't forget to get yourself some merchandise so you can then enter in a competition to come hang out for a day. Striking anvils are back up on the website, so are the Gas Forge Burner Kits. Links to all of that stuff in the description below. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you tomorrow.